Hello everybody, it's Q&A time with Dr. T and we have a really special guest with us today. We have Dr. Sheetal Julania, who is an amazing doctor. I feel very blessed to have been part of her journey. She is a Franz Cog, that's a fellow of the Royal Australian and New Zealand College of Obstetrics and Gynaecology. But not only that, Sheetal has actually done extra training in two separate areas. I feel very blessed to have been part of her training in the area of reproductive endocrinology and infertility. But Sheetal has also gone on to do an extra fellowship in the area of paediatric adolescent gynaecology, of which there's only four of us who tra who work in that arena here in WA. So it's a really highly specialised area of uh, gynaecology. So I want to introduce Sheetal. And Sheetal, can you tell us a little bit about your journey from the beginning to this point? Um, thank you, Tamara, for a very kind introduction. And good morning, everyone. Um, Look, it's, it's been quite interesting. I've been in Australia for the last 12 years now. Um, and I grew up in India in a very small village, really, really interior rural. People ask me, where are you from? And I was like, you won't know. It's just so small. Uh, my parents, I'm the first one who actually went to university and I'm the only working woman in my family. And, and to be honest, like I faced a lot of what we see in the news and the media. I saw that face to face and I faced a lot of that gender biases and discrimination against women uh, firsthand. And I think that was the biggest motivating factor for me. I didn't take it easily. And I didn't like that from a very early age. I was five and I felt it. By the time I grew up 10, I had this strong motivation that I want to show you that we are not less anymore and we can do everything what. Um, this so-called belief that men do in the family. And I started working with my dad in his shop, running his business. Um, and then drove myself to the fact that I wanted to go to a boarding school because there were no um, high school, which was good in that um, area. So I said to my parents, I want to go to this boarding school, which was public funded and went there for high school and then did the entrance exam uh, for the medical school did medical school and post-graduation in obs um, in India. And the, again, the reason for choosing obstetrics and gynecology was my passion for women's health, because I do believe that bringing that positivity and positive health is one of the very important factors of good performance in later life and having that understanding. And I always was passionate about it. So that was one of the reasons I chose that path. Um, after that, my journey carried on and I got married to my husband who moved to Australia. So I came to Australia and again, I had to face those coming from overseas. I had to do some, and not some actually, a lot of examinations to get through the training program. And I decided to do the OBS and Gynae training in Australia, which is Tamara said, uh, Franz Cog, which is a fellow of the Royal Australia and New Zealand College of OBS and Gynae. And I did a six year training program. And in the sixth year, I did reproductive endocrinology and fertility, which is a huge area. And it's so exciting and interesting. I met these incredible people, including Tamara, Professor Hart, and Dr. Walters. And in the mentorship of these people, I carried on with my passion doing pediatric and adolescent gynae because I was introduced to the children's hospital in that job. And I thought this is really an exciting area because that same principle which I carried on that we could help women have those factors in their life starting early on. And then that can make a lot of positive impact in their later life. So that was my story for doing the pediatric and adolescent gynae. Now, in terms of the personal life, I'm a married woman with two kids and a working husband. So yeah, quite busy. We are all in the same you know, juggling motherhood and career. So we understand like what it's like and we know what it is raising kids in a very kind of, you know, we've got everything, but even then there's lots we need to put in to make them good people and good human being in life. So that's, that's where I am. 
That's amazing. Your story is incredible. And I can't, you can't underemphasize enough the fact that you did all your obstetrics and gynecology training in India. And then when you came to Australia, you, you had to do it all again. Like that's an, that's a huge journey. So your grit and your resilience and you're like, let's just get in and do this again is amazing. And your, your infectious enthusiasm every single day for your job is incredible, Sheetal. So, yeah, don't underestimate this woman. She is an absolute pocket rocket. So do you want to tell us a little bit more about what is this really specialised area of paediatric and adolescent gynaecology? Yeah, look, um, yeah, thanks to Marwa again for this very important question because why pediatric and adolescent gyn is a bit different from general gynecology. Um, and when we do our training in OBS and gyne, like back home in India and here, we don't see that much of the adolescent population. And it's a very unique population because they're growing through that journey of from childhood to this adolescent part where they're developing their autonomy, they feel that they want the power to be in their hands. But at the same time, we know that they need that nurturing and support to be able to make those right decisions because evidence and studies shows that their brain is very plastic at that time. It means we can, it's very modifiable. So it depends on what direction we provide. So they do need that support um, to develop those important principles of having a healthy lifestyle. Um, that's one important thing. The other important thing about adolescent health is a lot of emphasis on sexual and reproductive health and issues because many of these issues do arise at this age. And it's very challenging because there's a lot of changes which are physiological, but at the same time, there's an overlap of changes which could be an indication of a problem. And sometimes it's not very clear. So having a very good understanding of their reproductive physiology, what is it meant to be normal and not, and when that spectrum changes. So that's what makes it really important. And I think doing the reproductive endocrinology and understanding those principles that how that system matures and how it moves on and then applying it becomes important. The other thing when it comes to common problem like BC period pain um, or pain of other sort, we know that if we can address it and support it very early on, that doesn't lead to a chronic health issue because it is a huge, huge burden um, on society, on individuals, on patients and their families, and they cannot achieve their full potential if that's not addressed in time. So that's the important aspect. A very important principle of adolescent health is preventative health, and that applies to reproductive health as well. So that's in a nutshell how, so it's kind of combining adolescent health principles with gynecology and putting the two together. And that's where those special skill sets to how to talk to them, how to address them, getting the parents and the family involved, but at the same time, respecting the individual so that they don't feel that decisions are made by others. So providing that patient-centered supportive care is the key. Yeah, I totally agree with you on that. And you made some really important points there that this is this opportunity for an adolescent to really cement their value systems and their beliefs. And if we can help to shape them uh, in a really positive manner around their reproductive health, then we can set them up for life, which I love. I mean, that's, that's a philosophy I very much believe in with regards to women's health if, is that if we can empower them with uh, the correct behaviours around their, their health and wellbeing, then you can set them up for life. I love that. Do you want to also talk just a little bit, because I get asked this question when I'm out all the time and I say, yeah, I work in the area of paediatric adolescent gynaecology. People sort of say to me, paediatrics, like, like, what do you need to do in gynaecology and paediatrics? Can you talk a little bit about that part of the, um, the profession? Yeah, like it's interesting every time I've said to people as well. Recently, when I was in Melbourne and came back and they're like, so you're specialising in paediatric and adolescent gynaecology. And that question was asked like a few times. It's like, what is that? Um, so, look, it's interesting. Um, but also, you think about what do we manage? What are the spectrum of patients? And it can start from a very early age, um, you know. So the common problems 
are the adolescent ones. And the most important one is the management of heavy, irregular and painful periods. Because we are not the women or girls who sit at home doing nothing. We go out, we do our things. So we need to be able to move out of the house. We can't have five days of our every month or every three months, or we don't know when it's gonna come and sit at home doing nothing with a heat pack and pain relief, which is important in the management point, but we need to get it in a manageable way that the child can function to their fullest. And there's a lot of range of options we have for the treatment options, depending on what the child and the parents wish to have, we can target the treatment, symptom management to a complete control of the cycle from non-hormonal options to hormonal and very minimally invasive options really, which are fully reversible. So we do get asked this question all the time, isn't this harmful? But we can reassure you the evidence suggests that they're not harmful options. They do help a lot with the lifestyle, with function and improving the quality of life as a very important target. So that's one of the common things, but there's lots of other conditions such as young girls with vaginal irritation, vulval irritation, pain, rash. And we see them, they go from one doctor to other and move on without much relief. And they get into this constant itchy, scratchy, anxiety provoking condition, which if it's not addressed can cause long-term issues. Um, in very young girls, the other thing is which needs to be investigated is vaginal bleeding. In a young girl is not normal who hasn't had puberty or especially like, you know, very, very young. So that needs to be addressed and we can manage that and help you with. The other conditions are early or delayed pubertal changes, delayed menstruation, because that can be something, a red flag to look at some other things, but it could be just a change or a delay, what we call a constitutional delay. Um, secondary amenorrhea, which is basically the periods which started, but stopped, really important to investigate and try to correct that in time. The other common condition we get asked quite often is polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is a very, very controversial area when to diagnose and when not to diagnose. And we see many women who have been diagnosed too early when it wasn't. There is some who didn't have got it diagnosed. So there is a very, you need to find a sweet point where you can diagnose it, but at the same time, not overdiagnose and instituting because it does have a lot of long-term health implications, which can be mitigated right in time. The other special area of interest in which I must say I had a lot of exposure in Melbourne was um, the follow-up of patients who had oncology treatment. So there's basically um, patients who had cancer treatments and chemotherapy. And we know that it has a long-term impact, short-term and long-term both in the reproductive health and fertility and the management of them addressing the issues. There is a lot of evidence which suggests that the sexual and reproductive health issues are very common and there's body image issues which persist in this population despite of clearing the of the treatment and they've you know completed their follow up with the oncology team but those issues mentally still carries on so addressing them so we call it like a long term follow up um, clinics so that's another special area of interest um, and if somebody needs counseling before the chemotherapy i have got experience with that as well the other exciting and important area is gynecological issues with complex medical conditions or in children with special needs, because it's a whole different group of children who can have some treatments, they can't have interaction with their other medications because it's important to manage that, but at the same time, making sure that the carers don't have another burden on the top of the other things they're going through and making that quality of life for the parent and the child or the carer as much better as possible. Yeah, so it's quite a lot of range what we do in pediatric and adolescent gynecology. Yeah, I know. It's, um, it's like a whole nother specialty in its own right. 
Um, only, only, yeah, I, sometimes I feel like there's this secret girls club that we're all part of that nobody else really knows anything about. Uh, there's also the, the very um, rare things that we come across. Um, something that Sheetal and I often have to go to in the middle of the night is an ovarian torsion in a young girl who's got, got a big cyst for some reason. It's either something like a dermoid cyst or even just an ovulatory cyst and has made the, the ovary twist. We, we get called out in the middle of the night to go and manage those. We see very young babies who have um, abnormal genitalia or maybe have a cyst, which is a bit unusual in a, in a baby. Um, we see girls with what we call malarian anomalies, which are developmental um, differences in their uterus or, or their vagina. Um, imperfect hymen, that's a common thing that we have to deal with, or even a partially imperfect hymen that makes it difficult to use tampons or even have sexual intercourse later. So there's such a wide variety of things that we get to be involved in, anywhere from birth right up until uh, that young girl hits 18 and is off on her own. <laughs> and then we deal with the gynecological aspects uh, later on in life as well. So it's really a lifelong journey that we like to start with our patients in this area. And you've talked about the range of other issues. Sheetal, just one last question before we wrap things up. What, what really floats your boat? Like you've mentioned areas of, of special interest, but like what are you really passionate about? What's, what makes you get out of bed in the morning and go, yeah, I can't wait to hit this hard today? Um, thank you for putting that question, Tamara. I, I think, you know, that fighter inside me, which, and it's like helping the girls and women in everything in their life. And as I said, you know, doing things which help them in the long term. So it's not like a short term goal that, yes, you've got period pain or yes, you've got a heavy bleeding and I'm going to fix that. I'll do a laparoscopy and fix it. It's not that what drives me. It's that how do we make it better for you in the long run? Not a short-term goal and long-term goal so that you can go out there, you can fight, you can achieve your full potential. That's one of the key areas. And then the other thing is the lifestyle, which again, we talked about that, how important it is to put that seed, reap that seed and early on so that they can flourish and blossom when they grow, grow up into this young, beautiful women. Um, and they just not beautiful outside, inside, and they can pass that on so that to make it a beautiful place for everybody. Oh my God, I love that. I love the fact that you're about the holistic being. And I love the fact that you're about the girl from the beginning of her reproductive life right through, but, but how that impacts on the rest of her life and what she thinks about herself as well, which, you know, we know is adolescence how challenging that can be for not only the girl but her entire family as yeah. well so I love that is there any last things that you want to share with everybody um yeah look we're here to help you support you through this journey and not making decisions for you but help you make those decisions so that you own it and empower you with that knowledge so that you can carry it on and help yourself and others as well. So we're just a, another passenger in your journey, but to give you that positive outlook and a supported nurturing atmosphere. Oh, beautiful way to finish. Put them in the driver's seat. I love that, Dr. Sheetal. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, you can visit Sheetal at Womb. She's part of our team at Womb. Uh, she also works together with me at Perth Children's Hospital. You're also at Fiona Stanley Hospital um, and so she and Osborne Park Hospital as well. So she gets around. Um, so thanks so much for joining us. And uh, remember, all the information that we have shared today is generic. It's across the board. If you have specific issues that you need help with please don't hesitate to reach out to your medical practitioner or come see us at womb we look forward to seeing you soon have a beautiful week everybody see you soon thank you so much